as we age and get older, we go to the gym, we see the importance of keeping ourselves in good condition. And in fact, some people are more fit and healthy in the later part of their life than they were in the younger part of their life. And they've often had a health scare that's woken them up and they've started to be more conscious about how they look after themselves. Why are we talking about that? Well, in the car world, it's very much the same. As engines get older, their performance degrades. We can't avoid that. Older engines are going to perform less well than the brand new engine when it came off the production line. This video is just going to look at what we can do to restore that lost performance. Where did that performance go and how can we get it back? First up, the car needs a good service. We need to change the service items. They are by far and away the most common cause of problems. And if we've neglected servicing, then we've probably run up some problems that are not going to be fixed just by changing the oil and changing the various filters and other components that you would normally do in a service. But certainly giving it a service, fresh plugs, fresh glow plugs or spark plugs, depending on the type of engine, fuel filters, oil filters, air filters, even cabin filters, all of this can go a long way to restoring some of that lost power if it's just been a case that it's due a service and it needs that little bit of a boost. The car needs to know how much oxygen is flowing into the engine. And in the intake, there is invariably some system for measuring the air, a mass airflow sensor, the manifold pressure sensor. There's various different devices that manufacturers use. And in most cases, this degrades over time. It becomes soiled, it gets dirty. There's usually a little bit of a film of oil and grit and grime that's just built up over it and that degrades the performance and straight away you've got an engine that's trying to work out how much oxygen is flowing into it and it can't do that because the sensor it's relying on is not able to detect all of the oxygen and that can lead to all sorts of running problems and that's probably one of the most common causes of a loss of significant amounts of power. Cleaning the airflow sensor, whichever setup we have in our car, is generally very simple. It just usually involves unclipping part of the intake and using some sort of cleaning solution over the little sensor part just to make sure that that is going to perform. And I've seen a lot of drivers just replace it for a new one rather than go to the effort of cleaning up the old one, they've dropped a new one in. And again, that will restore that lost performance if that was the culprit sapping the performance. The next biggest thing is the fuel injectors. Now, the way the injectors spray fuel into the engine is critical. If it doesn't spray into a mist and you get a dribble of fuel going in, it's not going to atomize as well, it's not going to burn as well, you're not going to extract as much power and effectively you've just got a smoky engine that's not going to be very good at converting fuel into power. This means then that getting those injectors clean is certainly a big priority if we want to restore lost performance. There's various injector cleaners on the market. Let us know in the comments which brands you prefer, which ones have actually worked for you. There's a lot of snake oils out there when it comes to additives and I would rather use something that someone has used and recommends rather than just rely on what's written on the box or on the side of the packet. In the case of very high mileage engines, it may be worth just swapping out the injectors. If the injectors are not flowing or they're in balance, that can cause all manner of running problems and mean you're down on power. So it's a little more expensive than just running injector cleaner, but injector cleaner can only go so far to restore lost power through the injectors. We've discussed this in other videos. All of the rubber hoses, the plastic pipes, the connectors in the engine will get old split and start to leak. Now that can lead to all sorts of problems with the engine. If it loses vacuum, it's not able to measure and monitor things in the engine as well as it would do otherwise. If the boost is not getting into the engine from the turbocharger, for example, you're going to be down on power and the engine's going to be a bit confused that it's producing all this boost and some of it is just disappearing and not appearing in the engine. In the case of older engines, say 10 to 15 years old, it really is worth replacing some of these connectors, pipes and hoses before they become a problem. Most people wait for them to split and fail. Why have a breakdown? They're relatively cheap, relatively simple to sort out, although some modern engines it's quite hard to get into the engine bay. Let me know what yours is like to work on and whether you do that yourself or whether you take it to a local garage. With the advent of direct injection, the need to have a PCV, the positive crankcase ventilation system, everything seems geared up to firing stuff into the intake that we never used to have 40 or 50 
50 years ago in many cases, we start to see carbon building up on the rails. Now, this carbon buildup will depend a lot on how we drive the car, the fuels we use and how we've looked after the car. But if the mileage is creeping up and it's a direct injection engine, there is almost certainly going to be some carbon residue building up on the intake. And if the intake is coped in carbon, the air is not going to flow in as freely and effectively. And that is going to rob us of power. Getting the intake cleaned will make a significant difference if it is really badly deteriorated. Some high mileage engines that I've taken apart and had a look in the manifold and in the intake, it's been a lot less of a problem than I expected it to be. And in those cases, the owners have used good quality fuel fuel cleaners, fuel injector cleaners, and they tended to do long runs rather than these short journeys that tend to exacerbate the problem of carbon buildup. But in most cases, the garage can use a boroscope to just have a look inside without taking everything apart and they can determine the level of carbon buildup. And you can make a decision on how you get it cleaned. One of the cheapest and most effective ways is probably a walnut blast. There's various chemical solutions that can be sprayed in and there's other methods. Let me know if you've tried any and which work for you. I love hearing your experiences in the comments and that adds to my own experience so I can recommend stuff that actually works to people. The turbocharger itself, it's a fairly simple device. It's basically a series of turbines that spin in the exhaust and then compress air on the inside but they do wear out over time. They become less effective at compressing air. The bearings can start to wear. There can be increased friction, which can affect the way the turbocharger spools up. You might be experiencing more lag. It's even possible that there is leaks of oil in the seals inside the turbocharger where oil is getting into the engine. That's not an ideal situation to have. And getting a remanufactured or a refurbished or replacement turbocharger will certainly go a long way to restoring that lost power. And at that point, a lot of drivers will look to upgrade. They'll drop a slightly bigger, more efficient turbocharger, a hybrid turbocharger. These are all things I've discussed in detail in other videos. will up the potential for performance in their engine. Manufacturers always seem to dial things back to be ultra conservative and ultra safe. And that's very true when they set the parameters that the engine's computer works in. Getting this tuned or mapped, depending on the region you're in, it's got different names, but changing the program inside the computer that runs the engine can make a significant difference to the way power is delivered. And in some cases, a turbo diesel I'm thinking of, you get more fuel economy and more power. In petrol engines, you tend to just get more power and it can be done safely. So you're getting a little bit of an extra boost of power without sacrificing reliability. It's always worth shortening those service intervals. The manufacturers have pushed them as long as possible. And if we've done any tuning or we're driving the car hard, making it work extra hard, Hard, it makes sense to just look after the car by getting those services done a little more frequently. Now, in terms of an old engine that's experienced wear, this will typically be inside the engine itself. The valves are always moving. The seals around them can start to break down. The pistons are constantly moving up and down the cylinder walls. Those little rings that prevent oil from getting from the crankcase side into the combustion side and preventing the combustion from getting in to the crankcase will start to degrade over time as they wear. And depending on how we've driven the car and how we've looked after it, there may be different degrees of wear. Getting a compression test done where the pressure the engine produces on the compression stroke will give you a good indicator as to how efficient everything is. If you're losing significant amounts of compression on one or two cylinders, it's not balanced, you've got a problem. If overall the compression is down, it's probably time to overhaul the engine. So stripping the engine down completely, replacing pistons, replacing the piston rings, rehoning the cylinder walls and renewing the head, cleaning out the head, getting the head polished and ported or even just replacing the head will go a long way to restoring lost power. Now, in terms of expense, that is probably at the upper end. A lot of people will be investing that money in a new car. You've got to ask yourself, is it worth doing that on an older car? And I know for a lot of us, we want to keep our cars as long as possible. As the mileage starts creeping up, giving the engine a complete overhaul and rebuild will effectively reset the mileage, taking it back to zero, and we'll have a brand new engine to work from. But we've got to bear in mind that the other components in the car are older, the bodywork is going to rust, the suspension, the transmission, all the other bits that you rely on to have a reliable car will also 
be older and will have done the 100,000 miles. And if we're renewing the engine extensively, we need to think about these other components as well and how much lifespan is left in them and whether we want to commit to renewing them or not. But in many cases, drivers will want to keep their old car on the road and running as long as possible. And it's just a question of doing your sums, sitting down, working out the overall cost to do these things and restore that lost power, and whether we could put that money into a, a newer car and get more performance or a lower mileage example of what we already drive. Let me know what your thoughts are as to keeping your car as long as possible or moving on. Where would you define that break point what is it that makes you decide whether to keep the car or to sell it and move on and trade up thanks for watching please boot the like button that really will help us to get out there if you haven't subscribed to the channel and a lot of you haven't already you'll miss out on the great content we've got coming up if you hit subscribe you'll get a little notification of all the great new content we've got as it happens so you you don't miss out and i've lined up this video and this playlist that you should find really interesting thanks for watching see you in these next videos